So uh, very proud to say that we have managed to get over a hundred of us, uh, a lot of money to uh, finally purchase his tickets, which I have right here. Good morning. For more than five years, our government, under both liberals and conservatives, have victimized one of its citizens and continues to negate his most basic citizenship rights. What happened is still happening to Abu Sufyan Abdul Razik, adds another sad and disturbing case of rendition, torture, and denial of responsibility by one of the nations taking pride in its charter of rights. Regretfully, this is our country. The place many of us, immigrants of all origin, sought for freedom and respect of human dignity. The revolting story of Abu Sufyan Abdul Razik is the nightmare of every Muslim woman, man, and family. What did Abdul Razik do wrong? He went to visit his ailing mother in Sudan. He is also a Muslim and a black man. What difference should this make? None. What difference does this make? Unfortunately, a great deal. I might even add all the difference in the world. Because of his faith, Abdul Razik became a suspect, and he has not been given a chance to defend himself. Worse, he was tortured to confess his alleged crime at the request and with the blessings of CSIS, whose agents traveled to Sudan to participate in his interrogation. Abdul Razik has never been charged, let alone convicted, of any crime, either in Canada or Sudan. Nor has our government initiated proceedings to strip him of his citizenship. Naturalized citizens who obtain their citizenship fraudulently or have committed certain crimes can lose their status as Canadians. Yet Ottawa has prevented Abdul Razik from returning to Canada and condemned him to live in isolation and poverty in Sudan. What is our government waiting for to allow Ab Abu Sufyan Abdul Razik to come home? In the name of the war on terror, our government has collaborated with foreign governments in the detention without charge and torture of Canadian citizens. Martin Schneider, Special Rapporteur of the UN on Protection of Rights and Freedoms in the scope of the Campaign Against Terrorism exhorts allied countries, including Canada, to investigate its role in cases of torture and recommends the adoption of appropriate measures to avoid such recurrences. What is irrefutable is that the Canadian government made sure Abdul Razik was unable to leave Sudan after his original imprisonment and to this day continues to deny him the right to return to his home. Soon after his first release in 2004, Abdul Razik's wife paid for an airline ticket to bring him back to Canada. But Air Canada and Lufthansa refused to issue Abdul Razik a ticket because soon after he traveled to Sudan in the beginning of 2003, his name has been placed on a no-fly list. At one point, the Sudanese government offered to repatriate Abdul Razik on a private plane, but the Canadian government aborted this project by refusing to pay the costs. The question of cost is a transparent excuse. On repeated occasions since the summer of 2004, Canadian government planes have traveled to Sudan for official trips by Canadian representatives, including Liberal Prime Minister Paul Martin in 2004 and Conservative Foreign Affairs Minister Maxime Bernier in 2008. 
But Ottawa has consistently refused to provide Canadian citizen Abdul Razik with an airplane ticket. I hope that the dream of so many immigrants, including myself, of living in a country of rights can still be restored. Allowing Abu Sufya and Abdul Razik to return home is a step in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Abdul Razik uh, is, uh, is a his name appears on a United Nations list. Uh, which uh, presumes uh, that, that he is associated uh, with, with terrorism. Because of that, uh, it is a federal offense. It's a serious federal offense uh, to directly or indirectly uh, collect money for him. And so those people uh, who have uh, collected the money to, to purchase this ticket uh, have, have done so at, uh, at great uh, peril and, and personal risk. Uh, the only step now is for the government of Canada to act with a ticket, with a confirmed uh, ticket in hand, the government of Canada now uh, simply has to arrange for a travel document. That travel document can be arranged within, within 48 hours, 24 or 48 hours, I understand. And uh, by looking on uh, this ticket, I understand that uh, there there is, uh, in fact, uh, uh, three weeks uh, for them to act. The, the date here I see on this uh, uh, ticket is the 3rd of April uh, of this year. And uh, uh, we're today, March 12th, so I think that the Government of Canada has ample opportunity uh, to act and uh, react uh, on, on this, uh, this ticket. So uh, at this point, there, there, there can be or there should be no further excuse. Uh, we, we have the, the ticket now. And so the, the question is uh, for you, Mr. Harper, are you prepared to abide uh, by your promise? Uh, it was uh, stated that if a uh, confirmed and paid for ticket uh, was obtained, that uh, Mr. Abdul Razik would be issued the necessary travel document uh, for his uh, return uh, trip to Canada. This has been done, and, and so now really it's up to the government of Canada to make good on its promise. Uh, I, I, th I think that um, uh, it's, it's part of this uh, ideological imperative uh, in the war on terror. Uh, as you, you, you might have read or you might have seen from some of the documents that have been released, neither the, the, the RCMP nor CSIS has any current or substantial information to, to maintain his listing on that list. So it's not uh, uh, on the basis of any information that comes from Canada that he finds himself on that list. It's, it's something greater than Canada. And I think that is more uh, a commitment or a deference uh, to other interests. And, and I, I would say that it's uh, uh, to our neighbors to the south that uh, the United States uh, has him on their Department of State uh, as, a, as a person of interest uh, associated uh, with the Al-Qaeda Al uh, and uh, Osama bin Laden. There's no, no evidence which has been tendered for that, and, and Canada has nothing which substantiates that. Sudan has nothing which substantiates that. So I think this is political. Uh, it's about a political deference, and even in the context of his possible repatriation to Canada, Canadian officials said from, the, from, uh, from Transport Canada, we have to check uh, with American authorities before we'll sort of uh, uh, consider the modalities of his return. From the, uh, all of uh, the evidence that we've seen, and we've seen uh, thousands of pages of documents, there is nothing uh, which says that he's, he's a risk to anyone. The, the, the Sudanese who had Mr. Abdul Razak in detention for approximately two years exonerate him uh, beyond any measure. They say that he's not a risk to, to any person in any society or uh, to international security in any context. And, and th these would be the people so. to know. I, I mean, I, I think this is a case of extraordinary rendition. Uh, we know what they did to, to, to Meher Arar. Uh, we also know that uh, if we read uh, the Department of S uh, State uh, declaration, it associates him with a, a person named Abu Zubaida, who was uh, considered to be uh, uh, Osama bin Laden's right-hand man. Uh, the evidence, any evidence related to that person in our federal court uh, has basically been discounted as unreliable uh, evidence because there's, uh, there's questions about, uh, one, Mr. Abu Zubaida being subject to waterboarding and torture in Guantanamo Bay, and secondly, of having a, a mental instability. 
And uh, be because of these issues, I mean, inherently that declaration is, is unreliable.